Good evening from London. European stocks pushed higher today following a rally in US and Asian markets as hopes of peace talks between Russia and Ukraine boosts investor sentiments and oil prices dip. Face-to-face -face negotiations with delegations from both sides have begun and there's some hope. The FTSE 100 reversed its losses on the open, rising 0.7% as UK supermarket prices surged at their fastest pace in nearly a decade in March as the cost of living crisis hit household budgets. The boost in early exchanges continues the trend of the FTSE 100 as a relative outperformer. It means the index remains ahead by 2% in the year to date. Bank of England data shows lending to consumers in Britain rose in net terms last month by the largest amount in nearly five years, driven by credit card borrowing. Consumer credit rose by a net £1.8 billion in February, around £1 billion more than expected. Credit card lending accounted for the bulk of the increase at £1.5 billion. The data showed both mortgage approvals and the value of secured lending were weaker than expected in a tentative sign that the housing market may have lost a little of its recent heat. China's lockdowns are costing the country at least £35 billion a month, with the hit likely to double if more cities impose draconian restrictions. Economists at the Chinese University of Hong Kong said the £35 billion blow in lost economic output, which amounts to 3.1% of GDP, is a minimum estimate and could double if other cities follow Shanghai in imposing stay-at-home orders. A strict lockdown in Shanghai alone could reduce China's real GDP by 4%, Meanwhile, if the country's four largest cities, Beijing, Shanghai, Tianjin and Shenzhen, all underwent a strict lockdown together, national inflation-adjusted GDP would fall 12% for the duration of the shutdowns. And the boss of P&O Ferries has hit back at government calls to reinstate the 800 workers it has sacked, insisting a U-turn would cause the firm's collapse. Peter Hebblethwaite said reversing the cuts, which the firm did not consult unions on, would lead to the loss of an additional 2,200 jobs. He said the company had painstakingly explored all possible alternatives. In a letter in response to Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, Mr Hebblethwaite said that more than 500 of the sacked crew had accepted and signed settlement agreements and that he could not change the deadline of the 31st of March. And those are your main stories from London at Close of Business.